there. Welcome back. We're going to take a moment today and do a quick short video. It's going to be an unboxing, but I want to talk first about something called Grail Kits. Now, those of you in the hobby know about these, but those of you new to the hobby might not. A Grail Kit is one of those kits that you really, really want, but you can't find anymore. Maybe you saw it, you know, years ago and it's now out of production, or you have a favorite TV show from when you were younger and there was a model made of it and it hasn't been made for years, or it was a limited model and they just, you can't find it anymore. That's a grail kit. I have several, but today I'm gonna show you one I got just two days ago. Now, I'm a huge fan of what was termed during World War II as the Wunderwaffen, wonder weapons. And most of them weren't, but I just, the amazing concepts that came out of the level of stupid when engineers are just let go. So things like, and I'm going to throw some pictures up here, uh, the Gustav Railgun, which was enormous and almost totally useless. It took hours to load and was used during one battle. Um, I did a model kit of the piloted version of the V-1 bomber, or the V-1 bomb. I'm sorry, not bomber. Bomb. This, the whole concept of this was you were supposed to fly it towards your target, aim it, and then bail out. And the chances of surviving that were probably zero. And then even if you did survive, you're landing in the area that you just bombed. People are going to love you. Um, I did a model of the Moser Carl siege mortar that was used in one battle, I think it was Sevastopol, which it was useless for anything else, and it had to be moved by rail just to get to where it was going. The craziness of some of these, some of the aircraft designs, like the America Bomber, or the Horton, uh, just some of these are just so far ahead of their um, advancements, but at the same time, totally useless. So two of my favorites are what they termed as super heavy tanks. One was the Mouse, which was an enormous monster of a tank so heavy it couldn't cross bridges. It actually would have to ford rivers with a snorkel system. Only two were made. Never fired, never fired in combat. Um, they destroyed one and, um, during the siege of Berlin. The other, and the other one was partially assembled and the Russians actually captured both of them. And they are now on display in a museum in Russia. Oh, well, one of them is the only surviving one. The other is the one I got just the other day. It is this. Here it is. One of my grail kits. The Model Collect 172nd scale P-1000 land battleship or uh, Lankusa, uh, Shorn, the Shornhorst version. We'll get into all that fun of getting with. And how I got this was from a company called Model Kit Hunters. Not a company, a couple of guys, really. Um... I'm going to put their link in the description. These are a couple fellas, one in Europe and uh, one in the U.S. It helps search for hard-to-find kits, purchase them for you, and then ship them to you. And they don't really charge a lot of money. They're very helpful. They're very nice guys. 
they're not sponsors or anything like that. I just, I'm always going to turn you on to good tools, good sites, anything that's good for modeling. And these guys are pretty cool. They helped me find this kit and did not require me to take out a second mortgage and sell my car. So let's get into what this monster really is, shall we? Oh, this is going to be fun. Now remember, this is 172nd scale. So, oh, come on, box. <laughs> Look at this pile of plastic loveliness. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I'm going to move the box to the side and we'll bring the pieces out. Hang tight, just a moment. First off, we have these. These are what look like the side panels to the tank, the side skirts, nice little detail, some injection mold markings, but That'll be on the inside, so we won't have to even worry about those. Nice recessed lines. <laughs> this is, oh my goodness. Okay, the hull, the top of the hull is over, is, is, 19 and a half inches long. It's like almost 20 inches long. Look at this thing. My goodness. So that's the top of the hole. We got some, oh look, they're even cut out. We got some uh, venting fans for the engines. By the way, the engines on this were, were two submarine engines. That That's what was supposed to power this thing. Two full engines from U-boats. <laughs> nice hatch detail. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, maybe I... Ooh. Okay, there's our um, road wheel supports. And there's a lot of those. There's Springs for our uh, suspension and um, yep, those are uh, let's see, those are track links. Oh, this thing has this thing was supposed to have three tracks because it was so heavy it would have required three layers of tracking to actually just keep it supported. And it looks like I'm going to be assembling each track one link at a time. <laughs> oh boy. There's our hull. Very nice. Not a lot of detail on that, but all this is pretty much gonna be covered anyway. So let's put all this back so we don't misplace anything. Very nice, very nice, very nice. So, move that to the side. Next up, there's our turret and our cannon pieces. So it looks like what they've done is they've bagged everything up to go with each section. So. I can see that this is all, here's the turret hatches. Yeah, so, yep, yep, yep. So this is all the pieces for the turret. And then we got the turret. So we got the cannons here, which are really nicely detailed. Oh look, they've even got little cannon covers. Nice. And then here is the turret. Now, to give you an idea of scale, again, this was the same turret that would have been on the Shornhorst battleship. So, 
and it's also the same size with a set third gun. The um, Bismarck had two guns and the Schornhorst had the third. So it's the same scale turret with just a third weapon added. Oh my goodness, this thing. This thing carried a naval bombardment cannon or was supposed to. How crazy is that? That is just, just amazing let's see what else we got here uh, okay this looks like all of the uh yep yep so these are the weapon mounts that'll go on the back of the hull and then it looks like we got venting covers exhaust line ladders hatches so this is the furniture for the hull looks really nice Okay, what else do we have here? Oh. Okay, this is the bag for the secondary armament. We got the searchlights here. This has two searchlights and two anti-aircraft uh, guns. There's um, a PPE kit that you can order that has different weapons. Um, that also is out of uh, production, but I'm, I'm not really worried about it. I'm going to build it like this, so I'm really happy with that. So yeah, this is this is all the secondary armament. Oh, there's some rails for the hull. Nice, very nice. Okay, and then last but not least, we have the road wheels. Lots and lots of road wheels, the drive sprocket, the turnabout sprocket, um, more suspension pieces. Yep, that's that's what we got here. That is a lot of road wheels. All right, and let's take a look at the instructions here. So, there's our instructions. Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't know if you can. We'll bring that way up here. See if we can see that. Track lengths, 1,068. <laughs> I'm going to be assembling 1,068 track lengths, one by one. Oh, that'll be downright fun. <laughs> okay, so very simple, nice parts layout. I really like that. The instructions are very simple and very clear. I like this. This is very, I wish they gave you a little um, explanation as to what some of the pieces are. I mean, I know these are the range finders, you know, with the hatch doors. So they, I um, wish I knew what those were. Uh, let's see. Yep. Hatches, vents. Yep. Road wheel assembly, track assembly, click this to this, click this to this, click this to this several thousand times. Um, and then we got the full on assembly, the final assembly. So we got the two any aircraft, the two searchlights, and then the main cannon, and then the rails. So nice, and ladders. And that's all there is to it. Um, painting. So, let me bring the box back here. Oh. Uh, so, I don't know if we can get this in screen. There's one paint style with a, a reddish turret and then this green, white, brown camo. Here's the other style that they have, which is kind of the combat gray with a yellow tur I don't don't particularly care for that either what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint this like I painted up my um my German flying saucer I'm gonna paint it in that uh, shatter pattern so it's got those sharp edged splotch marks that was used by the Luftwaffe um because a lot of these special projects were, you know, part and parcel of Gehring's craziness and some other things. So 
I think I might do that coloration. And this project's going to require some more thought. So I'm thinking I might have to get a couple of 172nd scale command cars, scout vehicle, maybe a couple of Panzers, just to give this thing a scale. Because this thing wouldn't have been driving up to the main line. This would be an artillery piece. So the idea would be it would sit back and so maybe we'd have like a command structure around it, broken building or something. That sounds like fun. Let's do that. So uh, let me give you a description of the monster because it just seems like an idea. The Long Cruiser P-1000 Rata, which in English is Land Cruiser P-1000 Rat was designed as a super heavy tank for use by Nazi Germany during World War II, proposed by Krupp director Edward Grott in 1942. So that was interesting. Um, the designs were presented in December 1942. It was planned to be 1,000 metric tons. 1,000 metric tons. Uh, if I recall correctly, when they did the math, um, looking at things, it would have been something like 1,500 metric tons. So, hello, Pixie. Why don't you go down? Thank you. He helps build kits. Um, that would have been heavier than the Panzer VIII Mouse, which we talked about earlier. That thing was 188 tons. Um... The project was approved by Hitler, uh, who expressed interest in the development of the tank, but was canceled by the Minister of Armaments by 1943. So, um, yeah, there's there's your scale. There's there's a man. There's the tank. Uh, I think I want this too. Look at this Fist of War German World War II E75 Heavy Panzer. It's a tank with legs. I've never heard of that, but I kind of want it. <laughs> okay, so. Oops. Let's try that again, shall we? <laughs> Here we go. So, this is an upcoming project. Um, Like I said, this is going to take some thought. This is going to take some time to work on. So, well, this will be in the works soon ish uh, but until then the next video coming out will be some more work on my rommel rod so stay tuned for that and uh as always thanks for watching please like and subscribe uh helps me out and i appreciate it and i appreciate all my viewers because why not i mean y'all are fun this is fun send me some Comments on what you think we should do with a, a diorama of this beast. Let me let me let me hear some ideas you might have. It'd be kind of cool. Okay. Until next time, uh, keep on modeling. Y'all have a great day and have a wonderful, wonderful summer. Okay. I'll see you soon. <laughs>